Hello and welcome back to my craft room. It's time for another page in my Create This book. Um, and I've already decided what I'm going to do and I'm ready to get started. So let's have a look at my desk. So um, the page I'm going to do, or pages I'm going to do today, are pages 20 and 21. And the prompt here is create an array of media. Draw one object over and over using a different medium each time. One drawing with a marker, one with pen, one with pencil, etc. If you're feeling extra adventurous, try using unconven unconventional media like ketchup, chocolate or anything else you can think of. I'm not going to be doing that bit, um, but I have got some other things ready to try. Now, my uh, muse for today <laughs> is going to be this strange little pink teddy bear. He has... <laughs> he has four siblings now this was number one this was actually a kit that I made up from a, a little kit I bought at a National Trust place in Bath one time years ago it was really cute really fun to do and I just thought I'll use the pattern again and I did it with some cheapy felt from a pound shop kit uh, the felt wasn't very nice quality and so the bears turned out yeah not perfect but you know but I love them I love their bright colours and they sit on the window ledge in my craft room so I thought I'd use this little magenta one as my inspiration today and I've already sketched him five different times um, so that I can use five different types of media it's already quite challenging just getting the sketches done drawing all the all the shapes of his limbs and and things from different angles so I've got my um, sketches kind of already done um, what I'm going to do is just use my putty rubber to it may turn out to be a bit of a mistake that I did all this <laughs> crustiness on the cover <laughs> um, first because it's going to be a bit lumpy to draw on but if it becomes a huge problem what I'm going to end up having to do is is um, do the drawings and things on separate bits of paper and stick them in so yeah I'm not going to worry about it too much but we'll see how it goes today so um, here are all the different things I've picked out to use I've been using my my fancy pencil from the last scroller box it's quite nice to use actually because this is these are all these little kind of nodules are raised so it's quite nice easy to hold and I like that it's triangular so it can't keep rolling off in my opinion, all pens and pencils should be triangular so they don't keep rolling off my desk. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to use. I've got just a 0.3 fine liner, black. I'm going to use that for one. I'm going to use these. We also got these in the last but one scroller box. Um, they're, pencil, they're graphite pencils, but they're unusual in that it's matte graphite. So these are made by Faber-Castell. Um, and we got a, a 6B and a 14B in that school box and it's lovely it's, it's like using a lovely soft graphite pencil but you don't get that sheen that you get with graphite I've never used anything like this before so I want to have another go with them then I've got some coloured pencils and hang on uh, I picked out uh, because he's kind of magenta coloured I've picked out those kind of those kind of colours. So I've got a, a dark um what's this colour called? Fuchsia, I think. Yeah, fuchsia. This is a uniposca pencil. Um another darker one is this magenta prisma colour. I've got a slightly different pink here. This is called Process Red. It's quite magenta-ish looking. That's another Prisma colour. And this one's called Rose, so this will be for my lighter tone. So I've got some sort of different mid-tones and lighter tones there. And then for the really dark shadows, I've got this dark indigo. Um, and this is a polychromos. And here's another polychromos 
just to make to do the little ribbon and possibly some of the shadows in that green because it's kind of complementary to the magenta I think um so they're all just color you know similar quality of colored pencils the the uni Posca pencil um the polychromos and the prismacolor so that's those and um, then I've got these pencils these are ink tents um I've just got the two colors um a deep madder and a magenta no a fuchsia um and i will be able to activate these with water to get really intense color um and finally is that more than five one two three four five and no, that's okay i've got five drawings i thought i'd have a go with some pastel pencils um, and I might end up using my kneaded eraser with those as well just to lift some of the colour and get some highlights. So, which one shall I do first? Hmm, let's go for it. So I'm going to go into a, a speeded up film of this now which I will probably waffle through or play a bit of music over and I'll come back and see you at the end. <laughs> Wish me luck. Right, so the first medium I'm going to use is the matte graphite and I'm going in first with that um, lighter one, the 6B, just to define all the outlines. And then um, once I've done that and tidied up a bit, I'm, I'm using the 14B to start really pulling out those darker areas. I'm using little scribbly um, fidgety kind of lines <laughs> to try and give an idea of the, the texture of that fuzzy felt that the that the bear is made from and um, I just keep going back and forth um, darkening up various areas because I always find that once I start darkening one area then another area doesn't darken enough and it's you just have to keep playing with the balance until it kind of looks right so yeah I just kept working on this it, it surprisingly this one took me probably the longest of all I got faster and faster towards the end <laughs> um, I'm not sure why but eventually I decided uh, enough was enough and it was time to finish and I'm just adding a shadow there with the uh, 6p and repositioning my little um model there. For this one I use the uh, Posca colour pencils, the Polychromos and the Prismacolor. Um, I went in first with the, that dark indigo colour to sort of pick up the outline, define the outline and now I'm picking up my, my darker areas with that magenta and the red and then the lighter areas with that pale rose pink, adding some green for the little ribbon bow tie and now going back in, now I've mapped everything out to really darken those darkest tones. The sort of deeper red colour and the indigo. Again using little sort of dashed lines really just to, and, and dots and things just to try and give that felty texture um, and using the indigo for the shadow so that's that one repositioning the model again it's a very well behaved model and this time i'm just using a 0.3 um, fine liner it's just a pigment fine liner use the same one all the way through quite sketchy um, deliberately kind of broken lines again to try and sort of add a bit of texture and to, to do the shading I'm using a combination of small dashed lines and dots this was the uh, probably the quickest so far uh, I'm nearly done yep I'm done I think I'll come back to that one and add a shadow later but I'm just having a bit of a break here and put popping my little arrow in more about that in a minute and repositioning the model again. Now we're going with the pastel pencils. So I've just got three colours there, that kind of dark brown and magenta colour and the red. 
and I'm pretty much doing the same process, an outline, picking up the darker tones and the lighter tones and the mid tones. Um, I'm using a blending stamp here, which didn't get out initially, but just to sort of work everything in and blend it all together. And then going back in again to redefine those darkest areas. And finally, re redefining the outline because I lost it a bit uh, along the way there. And um, using that same black pastel and the blending stuff to add a shadow. And now the final drawing. Um, this one's using the uh, ink tense pencils. I just had two colours here. It was uh, dark madder and magenta, I think. Just starting to activate the water here, and you can see the ink tense come up way darker once you activate them than, than they are when you apply them dry. There we are. I'm pretty much done. I'm going to do my my rule, my rule which I made last time, and I have to sign, date, and add an arrow to every page. I don't usually think about signing my pictures, but I think it's a good habit to get into, and, and it's really nice to see the date later on when I'm looking back on it to see, you know when I did various things. Right, let's get with this one. So I've done my little arrow here, pointing to the page number. I'm going to sign it down here. And I'm going to date stamp it. So I'll put it, I should put it here. There. Now what um, Mariah Elizabeth does with her pages is she uses clear packing tape and I've got a big, <laughs> a big pack of packing tape here um, to protect her pages. On my Wreck the Journal I used Mod Podge before but they stick together a bit but one of my lovely viewers has suggested putting baby powder between the pages too help stop them sticking together. So I think I'm going to try that in the wreck the journal and with this one I'm going to give the packing tape one more go. But I did it here. I found it quite hard to get it straight without wrinkles. It's all wrinkly here and I'm finding it just a little bit too shiny. I think with some of the pages I won't bother at all but with this one because already you can see the pastel is coming off on the opposite page. I think I do need to protect this one. So I'm going to give the packing tape one more go, um, but you don't need to sit and watch me do that. Um, I'll show you how it looks um, when I start the next session. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's my little, that's my little pink teddy, teddy boy, immortalised in my Create the Journal. Here he is with all his little colourful friends. <laughs> I do like these little teddies. They brighten up my craft room window ledge. They're very wonky and they're not at all perfect, but maybe that's why I like them. <laughs> so uh, that's it from me and my little friends today. Um, thanks for joining me. I will see you again really soon. Bye.